أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي When we start any speech we address first my dear brothers and sisters and nobody is elder here so I will not say elders I am the eldest one here I welcome all of you with Islamic greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May peace and blessings of Almighty God be upon you all. Okay, uh, we had till now we had uh, two sessions and this third one. We have two main aspects in this course. One, to learn Islam from the beginning. Second, communication skills or presentation skills right so in uh, previous session we have done we have given assignments to go and learn what we have done before that and come and present it it was not that it was not a challenge given to you all to go and prepare and come and present it was just to give you a glance of uh, what happens when you do uh, preparation and then come and then you while you're preparing you think that okay I can do it but when you're here and when you begin to present thing at that time everything changes why so we'll go into big details of what is communication skills so we have two sections today. One is communication skills. Basics of communication skills. You have to understand it. Okay? So I want all of you to pay full attention what we are discussing now. And it, it, it will be interactive. You have to ask if you miss anything. You have to note down the points because I know the way they are teaching there in the school. This is not the way of school. There will be presentation on the board and you have the handout of that. So you don't have to write what is written there. But when I'm explaining that points and if you want to remember something, you have to take the note of that thing. Okay? So be prepared. As I told you that we have two sections. One communication skill basics of communication skills and second is uh, the pillars of Islam when we will do presentation skills you will learn how to present the basics of that and when we will do uh, the pillars of Islam or carnal Islam one by one everyone will come and do slight presentations not all I'll tell you what to do and you will do it. Okay? So, please. I'll get back there. Presentation skills. What does it mean? First of all, we'll start with communication process. What is communication? process the source like now I am the source okay please stop me if you are not understanding anything and ask okay don't let it go source I am source because I am giving the presentation now I am talking to you now. and what I am sending is a message I'm giving you all a message right so I'm the source who is giving message encoding it encoding it through the channel and what's the channel now it is face-to-face -face presentation we are doing we'll go into the all details of this and then it is being decoded this message will be decoded it will be decoding by whom by the receiver 
Who are receivers? You all are receivers. Right? And then, if you'll receive it, you'll give me a feedback. Now, in this presentation, we'll go through this process. We'll know what is this process. Got it? What is source? As the source of the message, you need to be clear about why you are communicating and what you want to communicate. Anywhere, though it is presentation here, I know what is my purpose of doing it. But if you are calling someone, if you are writing letter, if you are writing email, if you are going and meeting someone, you should know why you are doing that. Okay? And what you have to indicate. You also need to be confident that the information you are communicating is useful and accurate. Now this is the main point. When you are being confident with your contents or with your product, whatever you are going to present, if you have confidence in that, then it will be very easy to do communication. If you are not confident in that thing, you cannot do that thing. We were doing together marketing long time ago. First we learned what was that product and we tested it and then we went into the market and we were doing marketing. If you don't have confidence, you cannot sell, you cannot communicate. So confidence is must. Then comes the message. The message is the information that you want to communicate. That's simple. Okay. Encoding. What is encoding? This is the process of transferring the information you want to communicate into a form that can be sent and correctly decoded at the other end. Okay. When you're communicating and when you're transferring that message you have to encode in a manner that they have to understand or your success is encoding depends partly on your ability to convey information clearly and simply but also on your ability to anticipate and eliminate sources of confusion for example cultural issues Okay, mistaken assumptions and misinformations. This is very necessary that when you are telling anything, remember always, most of the time we think we know everything. Okay, because from what walk of life we come, we are master in that. Thing. But when we are communicating with different people, here the clashes of cultural issues take place. Okay, here in this room, we are from the same region, almost. Indians, Pakistanis, same region. But in this also, there are differences. Like, I'm Urdu speaker, you are Punjabi speakers. There is a bit of issues in the language. You say something, in your language, it will be maybe harsh in our language. And we will say something and you will feel harsh in your language. So you have to take care of that things also. That's why when, when you're coming, you, when you're doing uh, means, uh, presentation, it is better that you know your audience. If you can do it, that will be good. That's why we will see that uh, have you seen Dr. Zakir Naik's uh, lectures, all of you? No. You have seen it? Dr. Zakir Naik's lectures, no. You? 
Nobody saw it. You have seen it many times. You? Hansa? No. If you'll see that when question and section comes, he says that uh, whoever comes to the mic, he tell his name and his occupation, profession. Why it is that by name, he will know that from which religion he is belong to. By name, he will know from which region he is belong to. By name, he will know from what kind of walk of life he is coming. And by profession, he will know what kind of mental state he has. If he is an educated man, then we can talk about science and logics. If he is a layman, then we have to come down and talk on that basis. basis yeah. So this thing is very important. Encoding is that when you give message, it should be understood to all of them. If in our presentation, like in our presentation, if there are people who are not very educated and there are people very much educated, then what line we should choose? A layman. Because the people who are not educated, they should understand that language. And people who are educated, they will understand all that. Right? So encoding is necessary. The key part of this is knowing your audience, as I said. Failure to understand who you are communicating with will result in delivering messages that are misunderstood. I explained it already. Channel. Messages are conveyed through channels. With verbal channels, including face-to-face -face meeting, like now, telephone, and video conferencing and written channels including letters, emails, memos and reports. Different channels have different strengths and weaknesses. For example, it's not particularly effective to give a long list of di uh, directions verbally while you will quickly cause problems if you will give someone negative feedback using email. Right. Verbally, if I'm giving a list of directions or list, list of uh, informations, it is very hard to grasp it. Okay. In the same way, if I'm giving instructions through emails, also it's very hard because you'll not always go and check the email. You're not always that on the uh, internet or anything. So what we have to do, the channel which we are using, now we are using channel is face to face meeting, right? So here, when I'm giving message, when I'm encoding, and you're decoding at your side, if there is any misunderstanding, you can clarify it. But same thing if I'm emailing you, it will be different. The way I'm talking to you now, it is in, you can say, colloquial language. But when I'm emailing you, or if I'm writing a memo, or if I'm writing a letter to you, it, it should be what? Formal. Formal. So in communicating in different way, different channels, you have to concentrate how we are communicating it. Decoding. Just as successful encoding is a skill, so is successful decoding involves. For example, talking, taking the time to read a message carefully or listen actively to it. Just as confusion can arise from errors in encoding, it can also arise from decoding. How? Sometimes you get confused with what the person actually wants to say and you will read between the lines. No. This is particularly the case if the decoder doesn't have enough knowledge to understand the message. Okay. If I'm saying anything 
and you are not aware of that thing. We are in the meeting and I said that, okay, I'm, I'm going to talk on when you're decoding it, if you didn't understand me, you have to ask me again what I'm saying. So at the other end also is the same problem. Maybe my pronunciation is different. Maybe my accent is different. Maybe it is uh, the language which I'm using. I usually use the layman language and keep in my mind that, uh, okay, you people, all people are knowing that language and if I'm saying in that language and you decode it in a different way, that will be a problem. So when you're decoding it, you understand you ask. Again, I'll say when you'll see such scholars like Dr. Zakir Naik or Ahmed Idar, when they are taking question and section, first they will listen to the question and they will repeat the question. The brother asks the question that this is, this is why? Because the person who have encoded the message and I'm decoding it, I should be sure that what he said is correct or not. What I understood is correct or not. He says, yes, that is the question. And OK, I can go ahead. But he said, no, 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 I, I didn't mean to say that thing. Then I have to rephrase it again to decode it. Receiver, your message is delivered to individual members of your audience. OK? The message is given to all individual members of the audience. No doubt you have in mind the actions or reactions you hope your message will get from this audience. Okay. How I'll get action or reaction from my audience? You're nodding. That is the reaction. That means you understood. You're just gazing me. So you want me to tell more. Yeah, there is non-verbal language, let's say. Keep in mind, though, that each of these individuals enters into the communication process with ideas and feelings that will undoubtedly influence their understanding of your message and their response. To be a successful communicator, you should consider these before delivering your message and act appropriately. If I'm coming here and if I'm uh, giving the message or if I'm giving the presentation, I should have in my mind that different people will take it in a different way and different feelings, in a different feelings. So not everyone will react in the same way. If I'm saying a joke, if I'm cutting off a joke, it is not necessary that all of you should laugh. Because for some people, it is a joke. But for some people, OK, it's just talk. And some people knew it before. So they will not laugh on that. So I should keep all that things in the mind. Feedback. Your audience will provide you with feedback as verbal and non-verbal reactions to your communicated message. As I said, that verbal and non-verbal feedback you will get from you. Pay close attention to this feedback as it is the only thing that can give you confidence that your audience has understood your message. Okay? You have nodded. She is not nodding. So I think that she is not getting my message. Right? Not very clear. No, you are not getting it. Good. If you find that 
there has been a misunderstanding at least you have to uh, you have the opportunity to send the message a second time as I told you that when you're decoding also and if you didn't get what message I have delivered and you understood something else then I have to send it in another way okay contacts the situation in which your message is delivered is the contact that's a very good uh, example always first I heard it from my grandfather and then we hear it lots of time that uh, some people say that if you will code out of context from anything from Quran then you will understand a message in a different way like there is a ayah in Quran which says that don't even go near to prayer La taqrabu salam and if we'll, I'll just quote it La taqrabu salam there is a verse in Quran which says La taqrabu salam don't go near to the prayer so what does it mean that you should not pray like I'm saying the verse in out of context it is not in the context but if it will come in the context it means something else it does mean that don't go for the prayer if you are intoxicated if you have drunk then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that don't go near the prayer because when you will pray in an intoxicated way we don't know that you're praying or you're abusing right so if I'll quote out of context then I'll there will be a fatwa from me that don't pray but it is not like that the verse is which means you don't have to drink you don't have to be intoxicated it doesn't mean it's not talking about the salah it's talking about the importance of prohibiting the alcohol got it so if we deliver we should deliver it in context and if you are receiving it you should receive it in context this may include the surrounding environment or broader culture corporate culture international culture and so on as we speak that all of us come from different walk of life your culture will be different his culture will be different my culture will be different it depends on in which gathering you're sitting you're sitting with corporate culture always you're being in your office you're being in business you're being in uh, conferences this corporate culture international cultures you're meeting with different people I just got call from a person he's he was Somali and I know that how he reacts before that I was having chat with a Chinese woman they have different story and uh, just now I hang on phone his uh, face that was a Qatari guy Muhammad Umar, my friend <laughs> so everybody takes all these things in a different way so when you're doing communication you have to go in context with different things Americans when they are talking in slang language or daily language even in the corporate they are using words which is abusive words the same words we cannot use here in this context or in this environment but if an American guy comes here and if he gives the message 
and if he used that abusive words then what you will do you have to know in what context he is talking you have to decode in that context and how you will know that the best thing is movies Some movies yeah no, movies actually you will see all the, you see one american movie knowing their culture is not a bad thing but okay accepting that culture and acting on that culture is a bad thing american way if i'll say that harshly if i'll say you in our words or in a british way or in indian or pakistani way i say sharia get out of here right what american will say <laughs> Sharia, fuck off, man. Yeah, this is their culture. That's what they're saying? Yeah. Right? Now, you will encode it in your language. What is the meaning of that? No, you don't have to do that thing. No. I mean to say, get out of here. As I said, you holy shit. What you'll translate it? Muqaddas Pakhana. Is that what he means? No. He said, oof. You have to take in that. Got it? So you know what is the context now? Now removing barriers at all these stages. To deliver your message effectively, you must commit to breaking down the barriers that exist within each of these stages of the communication process as we just explained let's begin with the message itself if your message is too lengthy disorganized or contains errors you can expect the message to be misunderstood and misinterpreted the point if it's too long unorganized you are just spitting around the bush it will not be understood use of poor verbal and body language can also confuse the message if I'm using poor body language or expressions that will also yeah some people begin to slip if not, I'm not active. So I have, be, I have to be active and I have to use whole of my body language, facial expressions. You know, when you're having confidence on your contain and you want to give some message to people or as a salesman, if you have to sell it or as a die you want to give the message of Islam so that he can understand what is the beauty of Islam if you have that confidence and if you mean that then you'll always be active in that thing otherwise if you come here and you if you want to just jan chodane wali baat so you'll never do it that's right Barriers in context tend to steam from senders offering too much information too fast. Okay, so we have to, when we are giving message, when we are delivering any lecture, it should be pure, informative, and Content should be very little. You know, when you're in the communication skills, it only when a good communicator, when he comes and he delivers a message, contents only have value of 7%. 93% 
it depends on your body language how you deliver it so you should keep in mind that thing ultra busy society of <laughs> Netflix gaming and wasting our time once you understand this you need to work to understand your audience culture <laughs> making sure you can converse and deliver your message to the to people of different backgrounds and cultures within your own organization in your country and even abroad as we as i told you in the beginning though we are from the same region but in our region also we have different cultures and we have different walk of life so we have to keep all this thing in the mind when we are doing something right now coming to the your top fears why when you stand there why when you stand here why when you stand here getting fear it's not you don't have to worry about that because 18 percent of people are having fear of flying 19 percent people are having fear of death 20 percent people are having fear of sickness 22 percent fear of deep water and 23 percent fear of financial problems 32 percent fear of heights and 41 percent of speaking to a group right Yusuf mm -hmm. right yes. this chart is correct accurate, yes. accurate? Yes. Hansa is it accurate right you're not afraid of this I got see you're not afraid of this not, yeah you went with the, in the deep water and you're also not afraid of uh, this of course of this everybody does but you know, uh, no, uh, you know, everybody is afraid, and everybody knows that we are going to die. But sometimes many, many clerics like uh, Molvi, they are afraid of dying. Actually, they are afraid of dying. But they say, no, 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 no. When we will go into the grave, we are having fear of grave. Right? Yeah. When we will go into the grave, we are having fear of grave. That comes next. But first thing is. Fear of death. Okay. Physical skills, controlling anxiety. Gabrahat. Ab gabrate ho? Bilkul nahi gabrate. Jab yeh raha hai to eye contact. When we are talking, we should have eye contact. All of you. You are reading Quran, at that time eye contact is not necessary. But when we are talking, we should have eye contact with everyone. If I'll only have eye contact with him, then you all will think that only I am talking to this guy. And he will come in anxiety. That why is just <laughs> watching me. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Body language, have I told you? Know your material. You should be. Where yeah. What? Wardrobe. What is wardrobe? Keeping. <laughs> what is wardrobe? You're keeping yourself clean, as in like interest. Yeah. How you present how you yourself. Right? How you present yourself. How you wear. How you give your expression. Hygiene. Don't be smelly around. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Use humor and conviction. That is, you know what is humor? Humor. Mazah dilagi. Conviction. I have to deliver. I have to give them this message. 
We'll take a break and we'll go for another section.